Hello everyone, Tariq's here and welcome to Wario Land 3 Part 7. Last time we actually found out there was a lot of stuff to do in the big bridge. One of the stages that I've been avoiding the longest so far. <laughs> but I can already promise you today we are actually going to do it. Both of them in fact, we already unlocked two of the things there. We're going to see both of them. However, I'd actually like to start right over here. The tusks, as you can see at their treasure chests, are almost complete. There's indeed three of them. And you might have noticed already, all three of them actually unlocked with this thing. The big uh, stone foot. Almost just wanted to say big foot, but that's something else I believe. <laughs> all three of the stages that actually unlocked actually give you one of the tusks. And therefore I'd actually like to get the third one first. Something I uh, wanted to point out. Oh, I also need to make sure to press the right button. <laughs> and therefore, the first thing we are going to do today is the second treasure of the stagnant swamp. As you've noticed in the previous episode, the stone foot actually drained the water in the stagnant swamp, giving us access to this pipe over here. And also this door. The pipe is actually the exit for this room. And the reason why it needs an exit is because there is a new mechanic over here. This mechanical mouse over here will actually try to grab you in that room. And if he does, he will throw you out again. <laughs> and there's also a pipe here which will actually give you a manual exit for this room. But that we first need to reach. It is time to find the red key in this place. A way to actually cheese the mouse is by trying to jump over him. And that way you can actually get yourself a head start. <laughs> but this still remains pretty difficult because, um, as you can see, there's a lot of crumble blocks here. And Wario still does not have the strength to actually bash through them at high speed, and therefore... <laughs> we need to be really careful with this guy. Using this ladder is a good option to actually try to avoid him, for instance. And then the moment he's to the left of you again, quickly go. There's a door over there we cannot reach yet, so ignore it and still get caught. <laughs> Luckily, that is the one plus side of this situation. Every crumble block that you actually break will stay broken, and therefore the next chance you get, it's going to be a little bit easier. <laughs> and with that, we... Oh, that coin is actually gone. <laughs> no longer an option to actually try to get that. But anyway, the moment we reach the top of the room, we no longer have to worry about that mouse. What we do have to worry about is finding the red key, because that's the reason why we're here, of course. Right over here. Make sure to bash through these blocks, actually give you a shortcut. And then make your way to the top door over here. Bye. <laughs> this is continuation. Next we need to go to the second pipe, that will actually lead us towards the boss fight. It should be this one actually. Yeah, that was indeed correct. Another returning aspect from Warrior Land 2. A turtle that will actually start swimming the moment you jump on him. In this case it's actually for a very short section because we need to actually enter this little uh, thing in order to get to the boss fight. Which is um, some sort of weird... I'm not too sure what it is. <laughs> I always called it a beaver when I was younger, but I'm not really sure if it is supposed to be a beaver. <laughs> it's going to climb on this grating anyway and we need to make sure to hit him in its... Um, weak point. Which is clearly not the blinking uh, thing, because that will actually hurt you the moment you hit it. <laughs> right, and now this guy actually gets dangerous, it looks like. You start climbing diagonally and also spin around constantly, making it a lot more difficult to actually hit him. Let's see if I can actually time this correctly. Because it is no surprise, the moment you get hit only once, you will fall off this grating into the current, and therefore immediately failing the boss fight. <laughs> the moment you get three hits in, the turtle will return, and we can actually go even further to the right. Well, that was a big sure to crouch in time. <laughs> uh, go me. The third item belonging to the tusks coming right up, even though it's not the tusk itself. Not entirely sure what it's supposed to be. Some sort of triangle, I think. However, it is going to interact with the two tusks that we actually found. <laughs> That's the most important thing. Not entirely too sure what this is um, exactly supposed to be. What we will see in the cutscene right now. Indeed looks like some sort of triangle, but uh, combined... 
Looks like something that belongs in the Zelda game in all honesty. <laughs> Combine it will actually make the volcano in the center of this world erupt. Don't ask me why. It just does. <laughs> and after the eruption, of course, things are going to change yet again on the world map. A new stage. W6, the West Crater. Second new stage. E4, the Colossal Hole. Both of them actually appeared after the eruption of the volcano. Both of them we're going to check out quickly. However, not quite yet, because I did promise you uh, the big bridge finally. <laughs> Might as well keep myself to that, shall I? Two things actually unlocked here by this point. The ability to swim and the ability to um, throw enemies will actually give us some more options here. The final one, the ability to see... <sighs> of course. I hate these things. <laughs> no. Ah. But anyway, finish that story. <laughs> the ability to see into dark water that we don't have. So the blue chest is still not available to us. But the other two are. And in order to actually find them, we need to go into the water. At least for the first one, of course. <laughs> Since we can now swim. Let's make our way left first. We go over the wall. And then head downward in order to get ourselves to a door. Almost, sir. <laughs> Surprised that actually did not count. Here we have a tricky bear puzzle. Avoiding to be frozen and therefore getting knocked off the platform again. Time this correctly and keep on jumping. It does not matter if the final one hits you because... Uh <laughs> Shoo. Um, first we need to get rid of the blocks here. And then, be quick about this, there's another bear here. Don't give him the chance to shoot at you. <laughs> You can also try to um, lure one of the other bears to the left over there to um, actually shoot you over here, this way. That will also work. I think this is actually the intended way now that I think about it, but uh, <laughs> I always just like uh, trying to bash that uh, bear. Here's the chest, and here is the key. Now it's a simple matter of going around again, because um, there's nothing too complicated about this. Here's a musical coin, which we need to remember for much later in the project. Oh, he got me. <laughs> Let's go. Let's try to get hit by that snowflake in a funny place. Right over here. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Here is our red treasure finally for the big bridge. And our prize is a blue crayon. Like I said, not per se important. Therefore, I was not in a rush to actually get this one. <laughs> We indeed, of course, do uh, still need all of the crayons at some point for one of the most ultimate unlockables in this game. But most of them are not accessible to us uh, at all, and therefore, even this one, I don't have to rush. <laughs> it is in our possession, at least. Next up. Like I said, there's another treasure going to be available here. And that one actually unlocked after our uh, little glove, the ability to grab enemies and items. Let's pick that one up immediately as well. Jump over the fish. Absolutely hate these guys, so... Make sure we do it in one try. <laughs> and then we are going down here yet again. The ability to swim is once again required. As you may have noticed, there's also a pathway to the right over here. Also leading towards the door. Unlike the previous room, this time we're not going to find the chest and the key in the same room. And it would help if I don't accidentally kill the enemy. <laughs> because as you can see to the right, we actually need to throw this guy. Otherwise, we cannot go in here. These are indeed throw blocks. No chest, but we will find the key in here. The chest is actually in the main room, but that one's a lot more complicated to actually get. Seen the enemy blocks in the first room, you might already know what time it is. You know where they are, all the way to the right of the bridge. And you may also remember there's actually no enemies to pick up in this stage. So, how do we actually get in here, you may ask? Answer Going back to the left, because as you may remember, at the grey key, <laughs> there's also a barrel we can pick up over there. That is in fact the only thing we can pick up in this room, and this we need in order to open up those enemy blocks. And that's indeed where the tricky part comes in. 
because we need to carry this barrel past these fish. <laughs> My recommended way to do so, just be very careful. Slowly approach until you see the fish jumping and then jump out of the way yourself. And then immediately start going right again. That way they shouldn't respawn again and give you the opportunity to actually get past them. And it looks like that was all of them. <laughs> Let's go on the lowest step, because that way we are at the correct height. And we can finally go in here. Oh, there's a minigame block here. <laughs> Did not remember that. <laughs> also not present on my notes, by the way. Oh, you were also not on my notes. <laughs> no, there's two of them, not fair. <laughs> oh, this is going to be tricky. <laughs> Okay, is there separate now? Come on! This is just frustration. This has nothing to do with platforming anymore. <laughs> die, please. I said die, please. <laughs> okay, weird enemy placement. Oh, thank you for the 10 coins. So I can actually play this minigame for free if I do it first try. <laughs> oh, never mind. It's actually 30 coins from this point on, apparently. Well, in that case, we definitely need to do it uh, first try. <laughs> we have a par 4 situation over here. A lot of rough. And a bunker behind it as well. I think full power should actually do it. Because this way we should be able to reach the bunker. Even already uh, get past it, if I'm lucky with my bounce. Which I'm not, so never mind. <laughs> but I've got two more strokes. Should be able to actually bridge this... Small little distance. Beam. Well, luckily they've actually placed a couple of ledges over here, so we don't have to go through that hole again. <laughs> At least partially. And then simply climb up here. And grab the green chest. The blue chest, we're going to have to wait. For that, we uh, obviously need the ability to look into dark water. And this is going uh, to give us another useless item. Explaining why I did not have a rush to complete the Great Bridge entirely. Because um, the crayon is something we're not able to use in a long time. And this uh, Game Boy treasure we're not able to use at all, so... <laughs> but hey, eventually we need to do this. All of it... Even the treasures that are not required in order to unlock things still count towards 100%. Don't forget about that. Still need to be cleared. We are going to be continuing with that in a minute. There's still one more useless treasure that we can pick up, so might as well do that now. Get that out of the way. The Frigid Sea also unlocked something new after gaining the ability to throw enemies, as you may remember. In fact, that is right over here. It was a little bit hard to overlook, I think, so... <laughs> No surprise, that is indeed what we're going to work with. Unfortunately, these polar bears are a bit too big to actually carry. Even though they don't have any trouble carrying us. <laughs> In fact, we need something else. As you may remember, the last time I was looking for the grey key, I actually stumbled upon a rock at the top right of the screen. Now that we can carry, and that is indeed what we need to use. It's going to be a bit tricky to actually get it all the way to the left of the room. Unfortunately, that's what we need to do. Make sure to actually get rid of all of the polar bears if you can. Because that way you, of course, have a lot less obstacles to overcome. <laughs> this thing we need. And remember, it will always respawn here if you actually get rid of it somehow. And with that, I mean not in the way you actually intend to at first. <laughs> Make sure to do this carefully. Only fall down if you are absolutely sure you're able to land somewhere. You don't have to guess where you're going to end up. Try to get rid of these blocks. And into this door. Bird enemies. Not per se that difficult to actually avoid them, so... Uh, shouldn't be too difficult. You can also actually use them to grab the key in the first place. <laughs> Those are nice. Well, red key at least in our possession. Now let's go find ourselves the red chest. We need to get ourselves back towards the rock, because we need it again. Die, please. Thank you. 
Now we're going a step further, of course. <laughs> the other set of enemy blocks that we met at the beginning. Yeah, of course, these guys are still alive. Or alive again, I must say. <laughs> Be extra careful for these guys. Getting frozen obviously means losing the rock. Speaking of losing, time for you to lose your life. <laughs> okay, let's throw it max strength. Otherwise, I'm afraid we're not going to hit all of them. <laughs> reach the ladder and reach the room. Red chest is going to be in here. Here, we're also going to find ourselves another new ability. One that's actually going to be a lot more prominent in Wario Land 4, to be honest. But uh, here we can also make uh, fun use of it. Snowball Wario. Most of all used on slopes, by the way, so... <laughs> Let's make some room in order to roll, roll, and roll on. <laughs> I could make an easy raw height reference here, but I can also not. <laughs> Let's go see if we are in the clear. Ow, there's an enemy up there, by the way. <laughs> Looks like we are. For these blocks, we are actually um, going to need Snowball Wario. It's pretty obvious that's the only thing that can actually destroy these things. I'm tempted to use the ledge on the right in order to roll there. But you will find out you don't have enough strength. So you first want to roll on the left ledge. And find out there's a secret room to the right. <laughs> the longer you roll, the bigger the snowball becomes. And only the largest size snowball is able to break these blocks. Not every size snowball can. So <laughs> we need to activate it from this room. And this is how it works. See, now we get big enough. Get through the snowball blocks and to the red chest. Always amazing puzzles like these. And the treasure. Another useless one. It's a teapot. <laughs> Do make sure you get to the kitchen in time the moment you hear it whistle. <laughs> Perhaps something I'm going to be doing in a minute the moment I'm done. Well, um, that clears off two of the useless treasures again. I think we can actually go towards the crater. There we can actually find ourselves a good and useful one. The west crater W6 is going to be a new stage, and therefore we are going to be hunting for the grey chest. Looks like we are going to start at the top and make our way down. Ouch! <laughs> Well, we do need fire in order to get the grey key, but I'm not too sure if I'm able to... No, oh, yeah. I should have been able to, but I missed the jump. <laughs> no matter, as you can see, there's also a lot of flames at the pit over here. Just got flamed somewhere over here. As you can see, all the way to the left is indeed the grey key. But after some fire blocks, you try to bounce around between the leftmost walls, or these blocks, for instance. <laughs> and that way, get yourself through there. If I was a true speedrunner, I would have been able to get this one on the first go, but uh, <laughs> as you can clearly see, that was in theory possible. Now, we're going to hunt for the grey chest. Stages like these are way too confusing, so allow me to actually cheat a little bit and look on my notes where I need to go. To the little alcove above us, apparently. It shouldn't be a problem. Thank you. In yeah, stages like these, I usually uh, am not able to remember everything. It's going to be hell the moment I need to collect the musical coins in stages like these. <laughs> Just need some preparation. But like I said, there is an alcove above us. And that we can actually bash into. A lot of hidden walls here. It looks like we need to go down from this point. Yeah, I really need to ground pound for Wario Land 2 again. <laughs> Quick way to actually bash your way through. Of course, eventually we will also get it in this game, but uh, I'm already starting to miss it. <laughs> we need it now, game. <laughs> Here we will actually find the great chest. It's going to be that difficult to actually get that done because we need this enemy in order to get rid of all of the enemy blocks we find up here. In the meantime, he's of course going to try to turn you into Yarn Wario and uh, make you fall down again. But first, we need to destroy the blocks. No. Oh. Screw you. Let's do it like this. <laughs> also works. Right. 
more. Oh, this jump is really tricky to make, so... Only tap the A button slightly, and that way it will work. Put you up here. Yes, of course, there's more. Oh. It's not a great chest that is here, it's a red key. <laughs> oh, I see what I'm doing wrong. I need to go uh, turn myself into Yarn Wario. I did need to go to this room, but I don't need to clear the room. I need to turn into Yarn Wario, because the blocks here... We'll get destroyed by it. And that will lead us to the grey chest. <laughs> Go me. I start cheating by using my notes a little bit. Because of not remembering it on my own. And I actually read my notes wrong. <laughs> because in all honesty, it was correct on my notes. I was just stupid enough to assume I needed to clear the room entirely. <laughs> but anyway, we get the left eye. The left silver eye, to be precise, I'm pretty sure. Because there's two sets of eyes in this game. And this is the first one of that first set. <laughs> Let's go see if we can find the next one in the next episode. Because 20 minutes have been reached and therefore I don't plan on doing it now. Looking at my notes, I can already see where we can find it. Might actually decide to start the next episode with that. So we can immediately move on to the Tower of Revival after that. So, thank you all for watching. And I will see you guys in part 8 of Wario Land 3. The overworld map is already opening up for quite a bit. We even have the 6th stage already in one of the quadrants. Next time, more progress. Shrieks out! See you guys next time.